I'm Nathan Schrader. I'm a solution architect here at ThoughtSpot. I work particularly with quite a few of our embedded clients uh, who are, again, really taking the ThoughtSpot analytic application and presenting it within the context of their own solutions. So and in many cases, that are things like internal portals uh, where you've got a centralized place for your account teams or, or sales teams. Uh, to go leverage your data and perform different actions, we can bring ThoughtSpot analytics into that to enhance the overall workflow uh, and to bring more of an exploratory search-based analytics into that framework. You know, similarly, if you are a large-scale software application that deploys one or several products to your end customers, often those times those pro products have simple analytics in them today, ThoughtSpot's a really great way to enhance that. You know, we can bring not only uh, additional capabilities to the reporting and dashboarding interfaces like drill uh, automated insights and spot iq but you can also leverage some of our ai and natural language querying and searching capabilities using features like sage or you can just ask a simple question of your data and get a quick reply without ever actually leaving uh, the application that they live in today so to start i'm really going to highlight kind of how this works from front to back you know starting with the snowflake database uh, moving into how we create the connection from Snowflake to ThoughtSpot. And then finally, how we actually layer a web application on top of ThoughtSpot and leverage the capabilities uh, from the application. All right, so starting with the data itself, right now you can see I'm inside of my Snowflake console and kind of just uh, talking about some of the tables that we've made available here. And again, this is really kind of a CPG retail sales use case. So we've got a core uh, fact table, which represents the individual transactions, you know, what exactly was purchased at what time. And then a series of supporting dimension tables. In this case, we have the products, you know, what uh, product was purchased and the store where it was purchased at. So this is the underlying data set itself. You can see it's not terribly large, about 5 million rows. But again, because we're using Snowflake here, this can get substantially larger and we'll be able to have that same experience. So now that we have a data set uh, exposed within Snowflake, the next step is to come to ThoughtSpot and create the metadata layer that we call the worksheet. So prior to what you're seeing on the screen right now, I went through our connection setup. You know, this is just really leveraging your Snowflake account credentials, telling ThoughtSpot what warehouse and database you want to leverage. And then we expose the series of tables for you to uh, start to build these worksheets on top of. So in this case, you can see that I've replicated the three tables that we were just looking at inside of the Snowflake interface. I've got my core fact table, and I've defined joins between the fact table and the store table and the fact table and the products table. Again, because we're leveraging Snowflake here and we have our foreign and primary keys defined, we're able to pick these join relationships up automatically. If there's something more customized that we want to do, we can always come over here on the left and start to define the individual join logic. So in this case, you can see product ID equals product ID. From here, we start to do some initial formatting on the data set to make it more end user friendly. So again, what we're really doing is taking a lot of those uh, really shortened, uh, maybe all uppercase with the underscore table names or column names and making these things into more friendly readable versions, uh, as well as defining things like synonyms. So if people refer to the product type and the category interchangeably or the product and item interchangeably, we can find these as synonyms of each other. Uh, allow users to leverage either word when they're leveraging our keyword-based search. Now that we have our worksheet defined, we can actually start searching and asking our own questions on top of it. Say, for example, I wanted to see the total sales by product uh, just for the last year. By typing those words, ThoughtSpot's going to generate me a visualization reflecting those sales by product. In this case, we've got quite a few products in the data set. Maybe I'm really just interested in the top 25. I can quickly pivot this down, show me which products are driving the most sales. From here, ThoughtSpot has lots of other great interactivity that I won't go into. I encourage you to get into the free trial and start to play around yourself. We can also do additional things by interacting with the visualization, like our drill functionality, where we can go from travel duffel to anywhere else in the data set they may catch our eye. You know, Say, for example, I want to see what state are people primarily purchasing this in. Quickly pivot to a geographic type. I can see that Michigan's driving this. Again, I can click drill and continue down through my data set, all the way down to the SKU level, if that's something that's available to me. Once we have a series of visualizations we like, we click the pin button to actually start building out what we call a live board. So as I click on pin, you'll notice that we attach this to a live board visualization. We can start to group these up, apply common filters, and do additional functionality, such as our spot IQ automated insights, and the ability to uh, cross-link filters and additional automated capabilities as well. 
Finally, I can take this into Sage where I can ask my data a true natural language question. Like what are these sales in Georgia? And have ThoughtSpot interpret this quickly into an answer, showing me the sales trend for the state of Georgia over time, complete with search tokens, highlighting exactly how we got back to the underlying fields in that Snowflake database, offering you complete transparency down to the underlying data. So for the rest of this example, I've built out a live board that we'll be leveraging for the embedded application. That goes a little bit further, takes a few other searches and combines these all into a nice even interface. Again, the fun thing here is that some of the, we can do some of those interactivity capabilities I mentioned, like the ability to filter on jackets or to ask Sage a question in natural language. So the next thing I wanna show you guys is the actual web application itself. So in this case, we've created a little bit of a starter application with Vite and React that really just takes us to three different pieces of content that represent three different ways that we can bring ThoughtSpot into the application. You can see I'm starting on my navigation page where nothing on the screen at this point is ThoughtSpot. We just have a nice little welcome message and three buttons that are gonna take us to those individual components. And then the great thing about embedding ThoughtSpot is really again that we get to control the workflow. So often when your users are coming into their BI tool, what they're seeing is an overwhelming number of dashboards and they don't really know where to start. When we're embedding this into an application, we get to control how that user's experience and make sure they're seeing content in the order that we want them to see. If there's one particular live board that makes a lot more sense to start on or that is more important than all the rest, you can make an 86 point font in the center of the page and people have to click on it. So in this case, my navigation is much more simple. As I mentioned, we just have live board at Sage and Search Embeds and clicking on these is gonna take us to the respective component. So as I click on Liveboard, you'll notice the same Liveboard that we saw within the ThoughtSpot user interface a few minutes ago is now present here within our application. Great thing about ThoughtSpot embedding, again, is that we have that full flexibility that we do within the UI. So a lot of those complex interactivity features that take you years to code your own in JavaScript are available out of the box for you or to be turned off on a per user or per, per role basis if you're interested in monetizing the solution. One example of that interactivity, again, is that drill down capability. If I want to focus on something like Missouri, pivot this to look at what county people within Missouri are purchasing in. So I'll come back to the UI in a couple of seconds, but I wanted to show you how we got to this in code. So to get started, I've just simply cloned down the repository that we've linked to in the supporting documentation. In this case, this is a simple React application that we created with Fight and we're going to be leveraging the ThoughtSpot React components. While this demo is in React, it's important to note that ThoughtSpot is not limited to React. You know, whether you're using Angular or classic JavaScript, the ThoughtSpot Embed SDK is meant to work with any of those. In the case of React, we actually provide React-specific components. You can leverage it in a very familiar way. In this case, everything that I've done is living within a single page. So you can see that really all this application is, is a top navigation container where I list out the different options like the logo, the live board button, the sage and search buttons, and then take you to a different piece of content based on whichever one of these you click. The first thing we have to do to initiate the ThoughtSpot connection is actually connect to our ThoughtSpot environment. In this case, you see I've hard coded the variables. Obviously longer term, this would be probably something read out of an environmental variable or contain server side. In this case, the first function we need to leverage is that ThoughtSpot init. This tells the embed SDK where ThoughtSpot lives and actually creates the connection as well as determining authentication. In this case, I'm leveraging authentication type none, which means that we're gonna inherit the browser session, which is really just me logging in to the ThoughtSpot UI on the other page. Or if I haven't been, we'd present the login screen. Obviously longer term in production, you'll want to use either trust authentication or synchronize with your SAML provider. Once we have the ThoughtSpot uh, embed SDK initiated, we can start to bring in some of the individual embed objects themselves. In this case, you can see I already have the live board and Sage embed here. If I wanted to include the search, I can just simply come here and bring in the search embed as well. The application itself leverages a session state variable called the page. This is really just which object we're going to render at which time based on whatever button the user clicked. So when we start, we're on the home page. As they click around our navigation, we're going to switch that state variable. 
we then render ThoughtSpot components conditionally based on whatever that variable is set to. So in this case, you can see I'm bringing in a ThoughtSpot liveboard is as simple as using the ThoughtSpot liveboard embed object, providing an ID for this liveboard, and then any sort of runtime configuration parameters you want. In this case, everything I'm doing is very simple. I'm bringing the ThoughtSpot liveboard as is, but obviously in the context of a more complex application, you're gonna to start to leverage a lot more of our advanced functionality, such as the ability to pass in runtime filters, the ability to customize the stylization through runtime CSS, the ability to link with external workflows through custom actions and events within the application. I'll let you explore all that on your own in the documentation today. To really keep it simple, we're sticking with the basic embeds. You can see I also additionally below this have my Sage embed where we specify what worksheet we're gonna be leveraging and allow users to write their own natural language queries on top of that worksheet. In our case, this is that retail sales set of tables that I showed you in Snowflake at the beginning of the call. So hopefully everything here made sense. Uh, this has been a really quick overview of highlighting just the simplest features of all the different components involved. I encourage you to reach out to us with any questions you might have. Uh, feel free to go online, try out our free trial, explore the documentation, and give it a shot on your own. Thank you very much.